My name is Stephen Sindoni. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Legends of Mount Shasta. In our broadcast today, we will discuss the mystique of the Magic Mountain, written by Billy Harshberger in Eureka's Humboldt Standard newspaper in May of 1936. With excerpts read from author Emily A. Frank's book entitled Mount Shasta, California's Mystic Mountain. There is a mystique about Mount Shasta, rising ethereally white above the green Sacramento Valley, a mystique that stirs the spirit and the imagination of humans far and near. A California writer named Billy Harshberger wrote in Eureka's Humboldt Standard in May 1936. Somewhere in the hidden reaches of western mountains, so the story goes, a strange race of people lives, works, and plays, a race of Lemurians who came to these shores from the lost continent of the Pacific. An old fanciful tale, you say? Well, that's not the half of it, for these have been stories about these Lemurians from credible witnesses who insist the Lemurians have the power of invisibility. Weird lights that flash from Mount Shasta and queer undecipherable hieroglyphics chiseled in solid rock lend credence to the belief that this race exists. Scientists have puzzled over the possibility that a great continent once reared itself in mid-Pacific islands. Could not the inhabitants have escaped to our shores? I sought out old seamen and they said it was so. I sought out old records, logs, and rare writings and they agree. From the lips of weather-beaten men with eyes trained on far horizons I heard of ancient cultured lands submerged by catastrophe. Harshberger goes on to say that historians have reported the fact that in California there is evidence to show that people, presumably Lemurians, have lived and taken refuge in the center of an extinct volcano, hidden from all possibly worldly observations, and that it is possible that these people of Mount Shasta are still living. This may explain the invisible city. Referring to the Lost Continent, Harshberger stated there were hundreds of records, geological and historical, to prove that islands have been disappearing and reappearing, sinking and rising in the Pacific since the No World has been recording such happenings. At Ponape in the Caroline Islands, 2,300 miles from Japan, is a deserted city known as Metallonim, the ruins of which covers 11 square miles. There are massive walls and great temples which are intersected by miles of artificial waterways. Sailors call it the Venice of the Pacific, and Professor Macmillan Brown, an authority on such matters, believes that this could have been built by tens of thousands of laborers, yet now the place is not large enough to accommodate 20,000 on all the islands within a radius of 150 miles. There are not 50,000 people living today. What happened to all the others? Harshberger ends the piece by stating, Scientists believe that there was once a continent which formerly filled a large part of the world's most extensive maritime basin, the Pacific Ocean. The former home of early Lemurians, I'd say, the last of whom lived quietly and pray in Mount Shasta. Earlier that same year, in January, John B. Scott wrote a piece for the Rosicrucian magazine in which he told of his trip to investigate Mount Shasta, saying that the first thing he wished to find out about were the weird lights that have been seen by travelers and even by astronomers in distant observatories. It appears, he observed, that there is actually a basis for the stories concerning the lights. This is not coupled with the Lemurians, however. Scott met a person who had spent 15 years on and around Mount Shasta. He explained there were unusual mineral deposits and peculiar physical formations which produced these uncanny effects. Not only that, but combined with certain air currents, even ghostly sounds are produced, and this is not, he said, something incident to Mount Shasta alone. He gave the example of the traveler on the Rhine listening to the echoes of a pistol shot or two which multiply into machine gun firing because of the physical formation at a certain point on the river. He added that there have been and always will be strange lights at certain times on Mount Shasta, 
though they would not be seen as much in the future as they had been in the past for good reasons. The government had been doing much work and the nature of this work would, to a certain extent, reduce the phenomena since the latter is concerned with purely physical or mostly physical conditions. The reason, he said, mostly was because he felt the average reader does not consider the ethers as being physical since he cannot see them and knows nothing of them. Scott therefore attributed the strange lights on Mount Shasta to be a combination of moonlight, snow, trees, ether, phosphorus, and other minerals and water. And after exploring the so-called strange sounds on the mountain and the other phenomena, Scott came to the conclusion that there are no Lemurians on or in the mountain. Then, surprisingly, he wrote that he believed that ancient people still live on Mount Shasta and that their dwellings or temples are located in inaccessible points on the mountain. He believed that they could be contacted under the right conditions by the right persons, but these ancients are not on the physical plane, nor are their temples. He concluded by stating he and others thought that many earthbound spirits from an old civilization which once existed on the mountain are still there, held closely bound to the earth for centuries by their materialistic natures. Mount Shasta, he said, seemed to be a sensitive spot, meaning it is easier to contact those in other planes than in most other places. Many seeking inspiration or new experiences, as well as students of occultism, visit the mountain during all seasons of the year. Mount Shasta is listed among the seven mountains of mystery. The others are Mount Ararat in the Caucasus, Mount Whitney in the Sierra, the Grand Teton in Wyoming, Mount Maru in the Andes, Mount Ruben Gary in Africa, Mount Everest in the Himalayas, and Mount Montserrat in Spain. In a very old Overland Monthly in 1908, there appeared a piece dealing with a fragment of the ancient continent of Lemuria, which stated California was a center of a civilization that antedates the continent of Atlantis by thousands of years. And in Tokyo, Japan, an article released by The Sun in 1961 suggested that the continent of Lemuria, of Mu, might rise again. A group of Japanese claimed that Mu was the cradle of a civilization, and it included Christianity, the Maya civilization, and the Incas of Peru. They stated that the continent was as large as North and South America combined, and that the natives had advanced navigational techniques which enabled them to visit colonies in Egypt, India, Tibet, Japan, and other far-flung places. In a 1933 issue of the Kansas City Times, a report was published about a British anthropologist who claimed he had very definite information, plus maps and photographs, regarding a mysterious lost continent buried beneath the waters of the Pacific Ocean. Was there indeed such a continent? Consider Madagascar, located in the Indian Ocean and one of the largest islands in the world. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Madagascar was probably joined to Africa, possibly in Triassic times, thus forming part of the Gondwana continent. But the splitting off is very ancient and bordering islands such as the seashells allow the conclusion that the island belonged to a continent called by geologists Lemuria which stretched as far as India, the sinking of which brought about the disappearance of this continent and gave rise to violent volcanic eruptions. Many believe the Lemurian colonization program extended to other ancient traces of civilizations found in the world today such as Easter Island and Stonehenge. These prehistoric stone monuments have never been adequately explained. And could the Lemurians be responsible for the recently discovered lost cities of the Amazon, ancient cities of white stone hidden for centuries in dense emerald jungles, cities which predated the Incas? Thank you for tuning into the broadcast of the Mystique of the Magic Mountain.